a private investigator means two things. You can be sure you'll run into trouble, and you can never be sure you'll get out of it. Not much you can do about it, I guess, except, like Julie always says... Walk softly, Peter Troy. And now Peter Troy investigates the casual Inspector Caswell. There are some people who maintain that although the police will drive you nuts with questions and such like when you don't want to see them, they're never around when they're needed. Well, I can't go along with that for the simple reason that I've personally found the police pretty helpful on more than one occasion. And my old buddy, Detective Inspector Caswell, has come through for me many a time. Although I wouldn't want you to tell him that, as it might spoil our comfortable cat and dog arrangement. I recall one occasion, however, when the good inspector behaved, in my opinion, like a third-rate schnook, and I could cheerfully have wrung his neck if his neck had been around at the time. It more or less started when I got home to my apartment one night, after a rather trying day. <sighs> oh, uh, Mr. Troy. What? Oh, Mr. Troy, I- I'm so glad I found you. Your office was closed, and I, I just had to see you. Oh, well, uh, do I know you? Uh, no, no. My name's Stanton, Paula Stanton. Mr. Troy, you must help me. I'm in serious trouble. Uh, Yeah, well, uh, look, Miss Stanton, I'm kind of bush right now. Now, couldn't it wait till the morning? No, it can't. If you don't help me now, grab him, Bruno. Right, take that his gun. Inside, quick. Close the door, Bruno. Okay. Look, just what is this? If you want to play rough, pal, you've come to the right guy. Hold it right there, Mr. Troy. Unless you want to be killed with your own gun. Sister, you said you were in trouble and you weren't kidding. By the time I'm through with you two... Shut up! (laughs) Never you mind all the rough talk, Troy. Or you get some more of that. Get up, Mr. Troy. And if you'd like to know what all this is about, sit quietly on that chair while I tell you. It was not exactly the jolliest of homecomings, especially after a rough day at the office. As it happened, the day had been a little worse than usual, because when I got back around four o'clock, after working outside on a case most of the day, Julie was very busy painting her fingernails. This did not help my mood. The less so when I discovered she'd not done what I wanted done. The Wilson report? Well, you said that could wait till tomorrow. I did not say it could wait till tomorrow, Julie. I asked you to do it today while I was out. No, you didn't, Pete. I remember distinctly. I said, what about the Wilson report? And you said, well, you may as well get it out of the way. And I said, well, could it wait till tomorrow? And you said... Oh, for the love of Mike, stop giving me all that dialogue. I don't care who said what. Now, you could have been typing that report right now instead of sitting there messing with that nail polish. But if you don't need the report until tomorrow... Julie, you're not paid to sit around doing your nails. Let's not talk about what I'm paid. It's little enough. Well, I, I wasn't talking about what you're paid. I was talking about what you're paid for. I had lunch with Jean Morton today. Do you know she gets 30 shillings more than I do? Yeah. And what does she have to do for it, honey? Oh, boy, I know that boss of hers. He is but the original office wolf. That guy's got more arms than an octopus, and he uses them all at once. We were not discussing Jean's boss. I was talking about what she has to do for her money. And I suspect she has to give a kind of service I do not get around here. And just what is that supposed to mean? Well, for the moment, you can take it to mean that you should have typed that Wilson report. There you go, changing the subject. Changing the subject? That's what we were talking about in the first place. What was? The Wilson report. But I haven't done it yet. I know you haven't done it. That's what... Oh, look, what's the use? I do wish you wouldn't scream and rave about the place. It's very trying on my nerves. Oh, there, look, you've made me put polish all over my finger. Good. I'm glad. Do you hear that? I'm glad. In fact, I hope you botch the whole job. Well, that's a nice thing to say. Well, I'm not in the mood for saying nice things. Look, look, suppose you just pack up and go home, Julie. But it's only a little after four. I don't care if it's ten in the morning. The sight of you sitting there with that, that, that goo gives me the screaming memes right now. Now, just beat it, will you? You are about the rudest man, Peter Troy. All right, I'll go. And between you and me, I'm not too sure I'll come back, ever. Just go. I don't know why I ever put up with you. Yeah, well, I feel the same way about you. Now, isn't that nice? That suits me. And don't you worry, I'm going. Yeah, well, what's stopping you? 
I have to wait till my polish dries, don't I? Oh, no, no, look. I'm going into my office. Please do not be here when I come out. I wouldn't be here if you paid me, which you scarcely ever do. Well, let's not get onto that again. Good night, Julie. Oh, but, uh, wait, there's a... There's a phone message Mr. Begley rang. Who? Mr. Begley, the gunsmith, he wants your pistol back again. He, he says that... He wants it back? He's only just had it for checking over. Julie, you must have made a mistake. I did not make a mistake. He You've said... You've got me enough for one day, Julie. Good night. But, Pete... Ooh, sometimes I could just... And I think you're a rotten detective anyway. tired, Mr. Troy. Had a bad day? A terrible day. And by the look of it, it's not over yet. Would you mind not pointing my own gun right at me? You needn't worry about that. I know how to handle firearms. You might remember that, in case you get any ideas about getting playful. <laughs> playful? Playing with you would be pretty much like playing with a snake, wouldn't it? Well, I told you to talk polite, Troy. You watch what you say to Paul, let's see. It's all right, Bruno. He can say what he likes, just as long as he does what we want. Yes, well, uh, how about you tell me what that is, huh? Of course. All you have to do is make a phone call. A phone call? To Inspector Caswell, CID. Caswell? Uh, what are you getting at? You'll phone Caswell and ask him to come here to your apartment. Uh, that's all? That's all. What do you want him to come here for? Oh, come off it, Troy. You know, it's set up when you see one. you got a name for being a smart dick, you have. Don't tell me you two are planning on bumping off, Inspector Caswell. See, I knew you were smart. What? You must be nuts. Kill a policeman. Look, why don't you just go and commit suicide? We didn't ask for your opinion, Mr. Troy. Yeah, well, you're getting it for free. Do you know how they'll hound you if you kill a cop? Now, the police don't like any murderers, but murder is a policeman... Oh, sister, I wouldn't give two bits for your neck if you go through with that idea. You know Caswell's number? Well, I don't know his home number. He ain't at home. He's at his office. We made sure of that. This doesn't make sense. You go to all the trouble of checking on his movements, yet you want to go through this clumsy routine of getting me to bring him here. Well, why not just shoot him down as he leaves his office? We have our reasons, Mr. Troy. Trust us to know what we're doing. Oh, I trust you, Paula. Like I trust a scorpion. We've talked enough. Now get on that phone and ring him up. Well, suppose you just fill me in on what happens if I refuse. Then we'll kill you. Save Caswell for another time. Simple, isn't it? Yeah, very. Well, it looks as though I don't have much choice. Here's a lab report on the door and job, sir. Mm. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. I've been waiting for that. Will you be working back much longer tonight, sir? Yes, yeah, afraid so. Things have caught up with me badly while I was out on that drowning today. You know, it would be nice if criminals just spaced out their crimes so that... Oh, dear. Inspector Caswell. Oh, it's Peter Troy, Inspector. Oh, Lord. Uh, I'm at home, Inspector. I was wondering if you could drop over and see me. Drop over and see you? Why, of course, my dear chap. As a matter of fact, I've just been sitting here waiting for you to call. I've absolutely nothing to do. The superintendent is here just begging me to go home. Inspector, this is serious. It's a, a very serious matter. You understand? Troy, I'm very, very busy, and what you're saying is not in the least funny. Goodbye. It's a trap. Bring some men and... What's that? What did you say? Troy, you there? <laughs> Gone. Idiot. You got cut off, sir? Yes, thank heaven. That was Peter Troy. Oh. Exactly, enough said. You know, one day that silly fool will get himself into serious trouble with his absurd carrying on. All right, Bruno, that'll do. Yeah. I think Mr. Troy has learned his lesson by now. Yeah. yeah at least I've learned something. 
I thought of it while I was on the phone. Yeah, you thought it too much while you were on the phone, chump. You try any tricks like tipping off the inspector next time and all... There's going to be a next time. I'm not calling the inspector. You don't value your life very highly, Mr. Troy. Oh, I value it more than you do, Paula. You see, I just realized that once you've killed the inspector, you're going to have to kill me, too. I can identify both of you. And you intend to use my gun to kill Caswell, which will tend to put the blame on me anyway. <laughs> oh, very smart. Not so smart. I should have thought of it sooner. You'll have to kill me anyway. So I may as well save the inspector's life. So no dice on calling Caswell again. And look, Troy, you... No, Bruno. Hitting him again won't help. We'll have to think of another way to... What? Are you expecting a call? Well, I'm always expecting calls. People just love me. They're always calling me up. Yeah, maybe it's the inspector ringing him back after we cut him off. Perhaps it is. Answer the phone, Mr. Troy. And be very careful what you say. This gun will be pointed at you all the time. And I won't hesitate to use it. situation like that. A girl and a tough gorilla bushwhack me and stand over me with my own gun, ordering me to call up Inspector Caswell and get him to come over there to my apartment so they can kill him. The reflection that they have to kill me, too, made me pretty determined not to drag Caswell into the trap as well. But I was hoping that he got some of the message when I yelled a warning to him over the phone the first time. And now, the phone was ringing at my end. Go ahead and answer it, Mr. Troy. But be very careful if you want to stay alive. And if it's Caswell? Tell him to get here quick. He may be going to die anyway, Troy, while his life is up, eh? <laughs> you may have something there, Bruno. Peter Troy. Pete, it's me. Julie. Pete, I just couldn't leave things the way they were this afternoon. I felt so miserable about rowing with you. Yeah, that, that, that's okay, honey. Uh, just forget it. Uh, i, I got to go now. What? Are you drunk? No, no, honey, I'm not drunk. Uh, it's just that, uh, well, I'm kind of tied up right now, and uh, look, I'll see you in the morning, Julie. Have you got someone there with you? With me? Oh, well, well uh, kind of, honey. Peter Troy, do you have a girl in your apartment? I, I gotta go, Julie. Who is that? Oh, it's nobody, really. Your girlfriend, huh? Girlfriend? Julie? Oh, no. Yes, your girlfriend. And rather possessive, I imagine. Look, she's only my secretary. We we had a slight argument this afternoon. Then I... you should make it up with her, shouldn't you? Ah, and if I'm not very much mistaken, that will be her ringing again. Uh, no, no, Mr. Troy. I'll take it this time. What? Mr. Troy's residence... A friend of Mr. Troy's. <clears throat> Who are you? Who am I? None of you mind. Well, I just thought it... Hello? Hello? She hung up. That's good. My guess is she'll be over here as fast as a cab can bring her. What are you talking about? She would Oh, yes, come... she would, Mr. Troy. That girl is very interested in you. And the sound of my voice over the wire from your apartment is just the stimulus she needs to bring her banging at your door. <laughs> hey, you're a cool one, and no mistake, Paula. You know all the tricks. That's why I'm in charge of this little bit of business, Bruno. Now, you get outside and lie and wait for this Julia or whatever her name is. Blindfold her. Don't let her see your face or mine. A hey, blindfold her? Hey, what's that for? Well, we don't want Mr. Troy to think we have to kill her, too, in order to save our own lives. We want Mr. Troy to believe we can let her live, even if we have to kill him. Don't we, Mr. Troy? Look, leave Julie out of it. I... I'll call Inspector Caswell for you. Of course you will, to save Julie's life. But it's too late to stop her coming here now. She'll be on her way already. <laughs> Ah, uh, 8.30. I think it's about time we called it a night, Sergeant. Uh, whatever you say, sir. Well, we've straightened out a lot of this stuff. Now I can get a clean start in the morning. Yes, sir. I was just thinking about the Bauer matter, sir. 
Now, if we... Uh, something wrong, sir. Mm. No, 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 no. I was just remembering that phone call from Peter Troy. Mm. He wanted to see you, you said, sir. Wanted me to go over and see him, the lazy clot, infernal cheek. Yeah. You know, he said something very odd. Sounded like it's a trap. A trap, sir? Yes. Oh, one of his silly jokes, no doubt. That is, if he did say that at all, I couldn't catch it too well. And he hung up. It can't be an April Fool prank. Probably something just as idiotic. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's just go over this Bardwell matter, Sergeant, and we'll head for home, eh? Take it nice and easy, girly. Ah, oh, you have her blindfolded. Good work, Bruno. Oh, tell her to stop struggling, Mr. Troy. Julie. Julie, it's me, Peter. Take it easy, will you? Just stop fighting. OK, you big ape, take your hand away from her mouth. All right. If she sings out, I'll gag her. Tell her not to remove the blindfold, Mr. Troy. It could mean her life. What? What's going on? We're in a spot, honey. There's a man and a woman here. I know there's a woman. That's why I came. I thought... Well, there you are, you see. That's what you get for not trusting me. Oh, I'm sorry, Pete. Well, you ought to be. These crumbs here want me to call Inspector Carswell and get him to come here to my place. What for? So they can kill him. What? Yeah. And now they've got you, too. The big idea is that if I don't call the inspector, they'll kill you. Well, Probably do that anyway. No, no, that's the idea of the blindfold. If you don't see them, they can let you go afterwards. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll soon fix that. No, Julie, don't take it off. No. There. Now there's no blindfold. And I can see you both. Not that either of you is worth looking at. That was very foolish of you, my dear. Now you're making things more difficult for us and very dangerous for you and your boyfriend. Anyway, there goes your phone call to Caswell, Paula. Does it? Bruno, Julie seems quite an attractive girl. Why don't you take her into the other room and... No, no. No? Very well, then, Mr. Troy. How about bringing the inspector, then? Or would you rather I let Bruno loose on your girl? Bruno would rather like it, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Mr. Troy, what's your answer? <laughs> I made your call for you. Now what? Now we just have to wait till the inspector gets home and you bring him there. Oh, now look. You better get him here, Troy. Or you know what happens to Julie, don't you? The sergeant said Caswell had left the office. You heard that yourself. Yes, regrettable. You made a mistake there, Bruno. You told me your information was that the inspector intended working very late tonight. Well, that's what I was told. Didn't expect me to ask the inspector himself, did you? I expected you to get me the correct information. I'm paying you enough. Uh, as for you two, you may as well sit down. There's no sense in phoning for another half hour yet. Yeah. Well, we may as well rest our legs, Julie. Yes, I suppose so. <clears throat> Pete, I'm sorry. What about getting mixed up in this? Well, don't blame yourself, honey. No, I, I mean about our argument. We might not get out of this... I wouldn't want Oh, to. don't worry about that. The last hand isn't played yet. <laughs> I wouldn't count on winning it, though, Mr. Troy, if I were you. Bruno's just itching to use that gun of yours. Yeah, well, I can understand his itching about something. He certainly looks pretty flea-bitten. Pete, is that your pistol he's got? Yeah. I must have been half asleep when he jumped me. Mm, not asleep, Mr. Troy, just interested in me. What? Pete, what does she now, mean? Skip it, honey, skip it. This is no time for arguments about dolls. Um, I don't know. Anyway, that's what I was trying to tell you about today. Uh, what? Mr. Begley, the gunsmith. He rang up to apologize. Oh, yeah. Well, to apologize? Yes. 
He'd had his apprentice working on some of the guns brought in for servicing, and, and when he assembled them, he left a part out of yours. The seer, I think he said, the, whatever that is. It was that you said, Julie, Julie, I love you. Now, you heard her, Bruno. That gun of mine won't work. Bruno, watch him. Too late for that. Be careful. <laughs> Hold him, Bruno. And I'll touch you. <laughs> Julie, Julie, you can let her hair go now. I don't see why I should. I don't care if I pull all her hair out. No, I said relax. Leave her alone. <laughs> Yeah, what's the idea of letting me risk my life by telling me that phony story about my gun being out of order? Uh, well, at least you know it's all right. That's why Mr. Begley wanted it back. He wasn't sure whether the part had been left out of your gun or another man's. Oh, now she tells me. I could have gotten killed. Oh, now what? It's not locked. Come in. Hello, Troy. I just thought I'd pop it on my way home and tell you what I think of people who ring up... Oh, what's all this? Is this also part of your little joke, Troy? You know, I'm getting a bit tired. Just a minute. Aren't you Paula Stanton? Yes, Inspector. I'm Paula. Eric Stanton's wife, remember? You were the man who had him hanged. Yes, I am. It happens that he killed three men first. One of them a police officer. Mm -hmm. And so Paula thought she'd bump you off, too. An eye for an eye sort of thing. Oh, so that's why you were ringing me, Troy. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, for crying out loud, I tried to tell anyway, you... Anyway, I see you managed all right by yourselves, you and Miss Summers. Is that all you have to say? Don't you yeah, realize... I'm rather glad I wasn't dragged away from the office. I had a lot to get through. Oh, do you mind if I use your phone? I'll send for a car to pick these two up. Well, of all the offhand casual... You know something, Pete? What? I think I might make the suggestion, watch your step, Inspector Caswell, instead of walk softly, Peter Troy. It turned out that we had to chalk a small score up in favor of the good inspector because his casualness on that occasion was assumed entirely for the purpose of what he called taking a rise out of me. <laughs> now, who am I to deny a simple-hearted policeman his childish pleasures? Anyway, he later showed his gratitude by taking Julie and me to dinner in the theater. And for him, that meant digging pretty deep into his dusty old pocket. So I guess he really did appreciate us after all. Julie never bothered to ask me any more questions about just what was the interest I'd taken in Paula Stanton. And maybe that was because she had a sweet little keepsake she kept on the desk for some time after. A small handful of hair she'd pulled out of Paula's skull. Mm -hmm. 